Can you imagine if 2020 was the greatest year of your life? I think it's a great question. I think it's a great consideration of what the possibilities could be. I was out for a run this morning and an idea struck in my head. I thought it was pretty powerful that churches around America and maybe other places are, are maybe other places, but I know it a couple, they're closing. Churches are canceling services. And then the very next thought that was in my head was, Jesus never closes. So if you have ears for this kind of message, and you're not totally antagonistic toward the idea of, of what I'm talking about with Jesus or God, having faith over fear, these sort of things, then this is my encouragement to you today. I saw three very prominent, well, two very prominent, but three, three very well-known NBA players, two of which are rock star names around the globe, Steph Curry, LeBron James. Let's read Steph's comment to the millions and millions of people that follow him, as well as ESPN, because they retweeted this. They took his Twitter message and put it on Instagram. 2020 ain't it, Steph Curry says. Don't know what to compare this situation to. Just got to buckle up, take care of yourself and those around you. Man, it sounds bleak. Let's read LeBron's. That's not the whole quote. That's the context, though. I'm not twi- I don't twist anything. I don't twist. Give you context. LeBron. I'm going to quote him now. Man, we canceling sporting events, school, office work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What we really need to what we really need to cancel is 2020. Damn, it's been a rough 3 months. God bless and stay safe. Cancel 2020. 2020 ain't it. Anyway, what I want to tell you is that 2020 can be your best year ever. Some Somebody, some leader somewhere, nobody knows who said it, but I'm going to say Winston Churchill because I like Winston Churchill. Man, he was a rowdy dude. He would have been so offensive to so many people today. And yet he took down Hitler. Big part of it, right? If you know your history. Um, but they said, never let a good crisis go to waste. And that's why I'm doing this episode. And I'm going to keep talking about it because I'm a voice of, of faith. I'm a voice of encouragement to you. That's what Instigation Nation is. And if your mindset is productive and your mindset is positive, not fake, not Pollyanna, not everything's perfect, not no, 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 can't hear that. That's called avoidance and being delusional. That means you can't handle truth in your life. You can't handle dealing with what's real. But if you're forward thinking, yes, this is a problem. Yes, this is a crisis, a worldwide pandemic. Got to use those infectious disease classes from nursing school. Pandemic, worldwide. If you keep your goal in mind and focus on what matters to you the most, you can be immune to worry. Maybe not coronavirus, but you can be immune to worry. It is possible. I teach this stuff. I can help you do this. We have tools. But man, church is closing. You need to know that Jesus never closes. And he always hears. You, I don't know if you knew this or not, but you don't need like, like there's no button next to your bed on the ground, a pressure plate to where your knees put your body weight on it. And then all of a sudden God's on air sign comes on and he can hear you now. He's taking calls. God's not the radio and he's definitely not your church. I don't care how great your church is. He's not those things. He's the king of the universe and he's not worried. He knows how this plays out. He's not suspending time with him for two weeks or eight weeks to see how it goes. You want to cuss a little bit when you talk to him because that's who you are? Go ahead and talk to him. He died for you anyway. He's ready to see if you have faith to take a step forward that you know you need to take in your life. But the government and everything else you're paying attention to has you tripping out. Look, we need updates. We got to play our cards right. 
we have responsibility to do wise and responsible things with, with what's in front of us. What I'm suggesting is that you stiffen your spine some, is that you stand up straight, put your shoulders back, and toughen the hell up. A little bit. A little bit. How about getting your mind? Here, let me, let me just put it like this. Whatever you're in love with is what you'll focus on. Whatever you focus on is what you're going to fill your mind with. And whatever you fill your mind with, your body's going to follow with emotions. Did you catch that? This is how to control your emotions. This is how to mitigate anxiety and stress and worry in your life. It takes intentional effort. It's not easy, but it's totally possible and very real right in the palm of your hand right now if you let it. But most of us are addicted to the worry. We're addicted to the, to the drama. We need it to survive. And that's a talk for another time. But I'm suggesting today that you get your mind out of the media's brainwashing machine and free yourself up some. Maybe check in once a morning on some bullet point sites like Twitter or so wherever else, rather than maybe watching the TV or watching every single Facebook post that comes along making fun of toilet paper buyers. Like toilet paper? When did that become a thing? It's so bizarre to me that we're, it's toilet paper. Like I, I totally don't get it. I, don't, I totally don't get it. But you need to know the stock market that's going on. What is today's date? I don't even know. It's Monday, March 16th. There's a ways to go. And if you stay consumed with these things, they will direct your decisions in your life. So I'm suggesting to implement faith over fear. What are you in love with? You care about your family more than China? Do you care about your family more than who the president is? Do you care about your peace, your mental well-being more then you care about laughing at toilet paper jokes? If you do, the fear will naturally lessen. The anxiety will naturally go down. The faith will naturally rise. The confidence in the easygoing, relaxed attitude will naturally increase. This is how you control your emotions. You control what you focus on. Maybe it's time to consult your maker on what you should do with this, on how to use this time of opportunity. We're all at home. Most of us are at home. When we have the end in mind, we can then choose to focus on the things that serve that end. And as we do that, that's staying productive. And then we're taking action, not sitting around watching all the different stuff and reading all the different things and freaked out about every report that comes along, listen, if coronavirus is going to wipe out the world in an apocalypse, there's nothing we can do anyway. You choose how you ride that out. I don't think that's going to happen. I challenge you to do this today. I challenge you to do it. Figure out what your end goal is. Figure out what you're in love with, what your real priorities are, what you really, really, really care about. And then focus on those things. Spend some more time with your family. Spend some time talking to your kids about why they shouldn't be living in fear. It does nothing. It does nothing. I've been in battle. I've fought. I've shot at people. I've been shot at. I've heard rounds go by my head. I've had buddies get hurt. If we would have sat around being scared, um, annihilation, I think most people right now are just making fun of toilet paper as it is, but you just need to understand while the world's going to hell in a handbasket, there's a way out. There, there is really a way out, a way of peace, a way of of being immune to worry and yet while taking productive actions forward regarding that thing, which in this case is, an, is a worldwide pandemic. So I think this is a great opportunity for you to know God at a different level. That's what I think. 
I think it's an opportunity for you to keep your family close, talk about priorities, spend some time with each other. And that's my take on this. I'm going to be doing a lot more. I'm going to be doing a lot more. But if you have influence with people, if you lead teams, if you're a manager at work, you have anybody where you have influence with them, if you have people that look up to you, like a, an international sports star has people looking up to them, you can't, you, you can't, like it doesn't make sense to give people a message of gloom and doom and worry and uncertainty and doubt and then finish it off with God bless. Bro, Bron Bron, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. The messages aren't congruent. God is the all-powerful being that has this whole deal running in an order. And I study that order. And I've gotten better at working with that order. Right now, the world's in disorder. And leaders need to step up and give people a message of hope. Real. A real message of hope. Like, not positive musings like, like you're enough. Because you're not. You're enough to start, but you're not enough to finish. Not if you have any kind of ambition for the end in mind or a goal for the end in mind. You're not enough. You have to develop yourself. That's just one little thing about the BS that I hear everywhere and see everywhere. These are not true things. What's true is that God is in control. What's true is that we have a crisis on our hands. And what else is true is that the more we focus on the fear, the more we're going to lock up and we're not going to be able to do what we have to do to move our lives forward. I guarantee you my family will come out of this better than we're heading into it. But I say that about everything. It's my mindset. I refuse to obey whatever message of fear and doubt and dismay the media puts on me. So needless to say, I'm real careful about my indulgence in social media. I have it. But super careful, especially scrolling Facebook. Thank God it's only toilet paper jokes for now. Have no idea why toilet paper is a thing. But that's the message of encouragement today. Churches might be closed. Jesus doesn't close. And Instigation Nation is a spot for power and strength and encouragement and equipping. And uh, until next time, man, if you got influence with people, if, if people look up to you, give them hope. Give them some strength. Let them see your jaw tighten as you give direction moving forward. We might all die. It might be the apocalypse. But you know what? We're going to go out swinging in, in a blaze of glory, firing off the machine guns. Unless you're one of the people who is really excited about giving up your guns. Then, um, again, man, I touched too many topics at once. <laughs>